Bucky and Suzuki homogenized 10 grams of food sample in 90 milliliters of water and made a tenfold dilution series. 0.1 milliliter of these dilutions were applied to swabs for ATP, ATP plus AMP and A3 tests. The amounts of food on the swab were 10, 1 and 0.1 milligram, corresponding to 1,110 times dilution. A3, ATP plus AMP and ATP were measured by Lucipac A3, Lucipac Pen and Lucipac 2 respectively. Results for 25 out of the 74 types of food are shown in the next slide. Within all colored columns there is a large variation between the foods, even with the same dilution. The yellow column showing the ratio between A3 and ATP, which can be as high as over 40,000. and as low as 3 for yogurt. These ratios give a me measure of how many times more sensitive A3 is compared to ATP. ATP levels as determined by Buck and Suzuki in all 74 samples. We have here minimum and uh, median and maximum. The variation in A3 is over five orders of magnitude between minimum and maximum. Considering that the level of A3 in a typical bacterial cell is around one atomole per cell, we realize that the contribution of bacterial A3 against this background from food residues is insignificant except possibly in products undergoing fermentation. A3 is a measure of food residues, not of bacteria, but A3 is an indicator that bacteria may grow on the surface. Here I have sorted A3 levels in 26 different foods by type, and we can see that meat, fish and vegetables have similar median levels. Nuts and fungi have higher median levels while the median fruit level is lower. The variation even within each type of food is considerable. In this slide the correlation between ATP plus AMP and A3 is shown. And you can see that for most samples we have an excellent correlation between the two parameters. But for eight types of food, the correlation is not so good. The points in the red frame, poor correlation, are raw meat, raw fish, milk and orange. But the overall correlation is very good. The situation is completely different between ATP and A3. ATP is less than A3 to various degrees as ATP is degraded to ATB and AMP. The longer time between cell death and measurement, the lower the ATP, while A3 is unaffected. ATP is an unstable parameter, completely different from A3, and this results in a poor correlation. Changing from ATP to A3 test requires determination of new fail pass limits for A3. Then comes the question, is there a correlation between A3 and aerobic plate count? 362 food contact surfaces in 13 food manufacturing plants and two commercial kitchens. The overall correlation was weak. And this is not surprising as the two assays measure completely different parameters. A3 is a measure of food residues and only an indicator that bacteria may grow on the surface and that it's not clean. 
The correlation was better, 0.58 in food processing plants handling only raw food, meat and seafood. At a cut-off limit of 500 RLU, 72% of samples were correctly classified. But we must also remember that all bacteria species are not detected by aerobic plate count. RLU per gram food residues is different for different types of food, as we have seen and this was not compensated for. In another study using Lucipac PEM, ATP plus AMP, with this type of food, R2.81 was found. In situations with food and process being unchanged, the correlation between aerobic plate count and A3 is expected to have a higher R2. Here, we compare light signals from A3 compared to three ATP tests. The A3 is the green columns and ATP are the blue columns. And as you can see, the A3 signal is always much higher than the ATP uh, results. As RLU is proportional to milligram food residues, a plot of A3 in RLU per square decimeter versus residual food in milligram per de square decimeter can be drawn. As A3 in RLU per milligram varies, the lines for the foods are differently positioned. So here we have, for example, wheat flour and here we have bacon. A fixed A3 fail pause limit of 200 RLU, the yellow dotted line, corresponds to 0 0.15 milligram per square decimeter of wheat flour, but only 0 0.00005 milligram per square decimeter for bacon. Cleaning down to the yellow line must be 3,000 times more effective for bacon than for wheat flour. Obviously, the fail pass limit should be set at least partially based on the RLU per milligram. How do we set fail pass limits in milligram per square decimeter, RLU per square decimeter, and CFU per square decimeter? The values in this table are made up for illustration purposes only. Red values are supposed to be measured while black ones are calculated. Dividing A3 on the surface in RLU per square decimeter with A3 in a homogenous of the food in RLU per milligram gives us food residues on the surface in milligram per square decimeter. This is possible as A3 is stable and as the A3 assay is so sensitive. If we measure CFU per milligram in the homogenate and multiply by milligram per square decimeter, we get CFU per square decimeter, the expected CFU per square decimeter. If we think this value is too high, we should measure CFU per square decimeter. Uh, on the actual surfaces, as it is likely that cleaning has killed some of the bacterial cells. Tentative fail pass limits are calculated from several measurements of each parameter, uh, shown by the green arrows, plus three standard deviations. Considering the bacterial species found and the properties of the food, the suggested fail pass limits can serve as a guideline for setting real fail pass limits. In routine, only RLU per square decimeter will be measured. So, what's the difference between having fail pass limits in milligram or in RLU? In milligram per square decimeter, we have an absolute measurement of cleanliness related to the food itself. While with RLU, we have the measurements related to the measuring system affected by instrument, 
temperature, enzyme inhibitors, activity of the rad of radiates. So calibration is needed. Milligram is a direct measurement, but not sensitive enough. But with Lucipac AC, we have a high sensitivity. Milligram can be communicated and discussed between users, even when the measuring system is not the same. Lucipac A3 can easily be measured and converted to milligram per square decimeter, as shown in the previous slide. Now we'd like you to answer, did you test for food allergens in your facility? And if yes, which tests do you perform? The results will be coming onto your screens in just a second. And there you go. So 37% of you said none. 22% um, said protein swab. 19% um, said Alyssa or lateral flow. 15% um, said ATP test, uh, not Kickerman. And 7% said uh, the Kickerman uh, Lucy Pack pen or Lucy Pack A3. Okay, great. So here is an overview of A3 applications. Routine co control of cleaning as part of HACCP to contract the risks caused by bacteria, viruses and allergenic food. Developing more efficient cleaning routines resulting in, for example, cost reductions. Evaluating new cleaning tools and procedures. Education of staff in hygiene and cleaning. Testing hand hygiene. And how can we uphold good hygiene with Lucipac A3? Upholding hygiene is a tricky business. Measuring A3 on a regular basis according to HACCP and perform trend analysis to be able to find reasons when things went wrong. Avoid introducing changes of procedures or raw materials without first checking that A3 values are LU are not increased. Conclusions. A3 is more sensitive than ATP and ATP plus AMP. A3 is stable while ATP is degraded to ADP and AMP by heat and by enzymes in the food. ATP is an unreliable parameter entirely different from A3. Allergenic food residues can be detected by A3 with high sensitivity. A3 is more rapid, less than one minute, than LFI. A3 combines speed, sensitivity, reliability, and portability. Fail pass limits expressed in milligram food residues per square decimeter and corresponding RLU per square decimeter and CFU per square decimeter is an alternative to a fixed general RLU limit for all foods. Biothema will be happy to help food manufacturers to try out this new method. Please send an email to arnelundin at biothema.com. So, only ATP test, first generation. Good, but ATP is unstable. ATP plus AMP test, second generation, better, but ADP is not measured. A3 test, third generation, best, as ATP plus ADP plus AMP is measured. Thank you very much for participating in this webinar and for your attention.